and it really dropped it in my spirit just while I was in my office. So it's going to be a prophetic message. Is that all right? Let's uh, turn to uh, Genesis, the 28th chapter. Genesis 28. Genesis 28, and let's, um, let's begin at verse 10. Genesis chapter 28, verse 10. When you have it, if you'll say amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord God, for your word. Your word is everlasting. Your truth endures to all generations. Lord, you have given us your word, Lord God, to reveal to us the written word, to reveal to us the living word, the Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, O God. We ask you to word our mouth. Let us speak as your oracle this morning and let your people be blessed, refreshed, renewed, and Father, let their faith rise to another level. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Verse 10, chapter 28 of Genesis says, And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night, because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place, and he put them for his pillows, and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it and behold the Lord stood above it and said I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and God of Isaac the land wherein thou liest to thee will I give it and to thy seed and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed and behold I am with thee and I will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of and Jacob awaked out of his sleep and he said surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not and he was afraid and said how dreadful is this place this is none other but the house of God and this is the gate of heaven and Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone and that he had put for his pillows and set it up set it up for a pillar and poured upon oil upon the top of it and he called the name of the place Bethel but the name of the city, that city was called Luz at the first and Jacob vowed a vow saying if God will be with me and will keep me in this way then I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace then shall the Lord be my God and this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house and of all that thou shall give me I will surely give the tenth unto thee how many want a God partnership now this is a very very familiar scripture most of us have read it probably have had it in Sunday school at one time in our lives or maybe in children's church if we are millennials but what I want you to see here is that this is this story is the story of Jacob after the blessing was placed upon his life by his father Isaac. Isaac blesses him now I'm not going to get into the story we know the story that Jacob and his mother schemed to steal the blessing but that blessing was his whether they stole it or not 
that was God's plan God said in, it, in one scripture it says God says I, I, I hate it I love Jacob I hate it Esau in other words praise God God is the one that makes his choices you don't make the choice God makes the choice you can't just choose to be a, a man of God praise God you got to be chosen to be a man of God a woman of God got two amen but what we have to understand is, is that, that, that God has a purpose and a destiny for each and every one of us. And so he is, he is blessed by his father Isaac. And then Isaac says, I don't want you to stay here. I don't want you to marry into the families of these heathens. I want you to go and I'm going to send you to one of the relatives, one of our relatives, and I want you to marry out of that family because that's the way it should be in Israel. That's the way God has planned it. And so we see that he's leaving on his way, going to, uh, praise God, to, um, uh, uh, what's that swindler's, what's that name of that swindler that he's going? Who, who, who was his father-in-law? Laban he's down on his way to Laban's house he has just been pronounced blessing upon his life and now he's on his way to, to Laban's house and on his way to Laban's house he, he stops and he, and, he, and, he, and he lays down in a place takes a stone and put it down as a pillow and he's laying down and as he lays down he has this dream and in the dream, he has in the in the dream, he sees uh, a ladder from he from earth to heaven, and angels are descending and ascending upon that pillar. When he when he uh, and and at the top of the of the ladder stood the Lord Himself, and uh, praise God. And he he and and so when he woke up, he realized that this place was a special place if you notice in verse 11 it says and he lighted upon a certain place look at somebody say certain place all places are not a certain place whenever you see in the scripture where the bible says certain it is distinguishing that from every other you know one scripture says there was a certain woman and in other words, when you hear certain, in other words, the, the Bible, the, 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 the writer is trying to let you know that this place was distinguished from other places. And so, praise God. And the first thing I want you to realize is that God has certain places where he shows up. The church of Jesus Christ is supposed to be a certain place. In other words, if you think church is just coming together and singing a few songs and hearing a sermon and going home you have missed the whole revelation of the church Jesus said upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it so in other words praise God this was a certain place and when he got there it was in that certain place that he had this experience of the dream and the revelation of that this certain place was not only praise God the house of God but but it also says in 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 verse number 17 he said and I and I was and he was afraid and said how dreadful is this place this is none other than the house of God this is the gate of heaven the church is the gate of heaven. In other words, he's saying, in other words, he realized that this place was a special place. Now, I, 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 before I get into some of the other things I want to talk about, I want you to understand something, people of God, is that church is a special place. This is a certain place. This is a place where there is a gateway into the realm of heaven in other words this is this Jacob realized that that place that Bethel place was a gateway an opening in the realm of the spirit to allow God's entry into his own earth 
and to manifest himself in, the, in his own earth. In other words, praise God, the reason that it is so important for, for us to gather, it's important for us to come together, it's important for us because when we come together, we make up a habitation of God by the Spirit, and what happens is that there are portals and doors that are open in the heavens, praise God, for us. What door do you need open in your life today? Do you need a door of healing? Do you need a door of a miracle? Do you need a door of finance? Do you need a door? Whatever you need is coming, praise God, from the spirit realm into the natural realm is coming through the portals of the gateway of heaven. Look at your neighbor and say, living bread is a gateway of heaven. See, if you don't understand that, you don't understand. I, I, I used to wonder why, praise God, it was so exponentially more powerful when we, got, when we get together and worship together than it is, praise God, when we worship and patting our feet all by ourselves at home. It's because Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in the midst. In other words, you just opened up a realm. You just opened up a door in the spirit. You just opened up a portal in, in the eternal that's releasing the eternal into the, into the natural, praise God, and transforming things. The reason that Jacob, under, Jacob knew this place and he, and, and he designated it by taking the, the, the pillar, the rock pillar, and putting it down and pouring oil on it. In other words, look, I got to mark this place. <laughs> ah, living bread, you're marked. Why do you worship like you worship? Because this is a marked place. We're not coming here. Y'all not coming here to see the, the Ken Hogan show. You're coming here, praise God, to experience God, to see that a portal is open. I'm coming because when I get under that place, when I get into that place, whatever I need, whatever I desire, whatever my situation is, there is something that's going to open up and release something in my life that I've never had before. He said, this is the gate of heaven. And the Lord gave me that scripture out of, out of Psalms 24. It says, it says uh, in, 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 in Psalms 24, let's turn over there for a minute. Then I'm going to try to get back to what I want to talk about. But I told you this was prophetic. The 24 Psalms. Look at the verse 6. This is the generation of them that seek him. That seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. In other words, when we come together as a church, we're opening up everlasting doors. We're opening up doors so the king of glory can come in. Mm. Who is the king of glory? Look at somebody say, you better recognize. You better recognize who's coming in. He's coming in. He's coming in. I don't know about you, but today I can hear the spirit of the Lord saying, he, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm coming for those that are open to me. I'm coming because there's all open doors today. There's doors in the spirit realm that have been opened up. Say, how did they open up? Verse 6, this is the generation that seek for him, that seek his face. We seek his face. We seek his word. We seek his, his, him. And because we are seekers of God, the gates are open. The everlasting doors has been unlocked. And the king of glory is coming in. Say, why do you come to church? Because I'm coming to see the king of glory. Who is the king of glory? Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. Look at somebody say mighty God. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. See in other words the almighty is coming. 
There's a door open up now for the Almighty to enter into your situation and your circumstance. The moment you lifted up your hand, it was like the lifting up of the evening sacrifice. It was like, praise God, when you lifted up your hand and surrendered to God, praise God. Do you know, praise God, that, that one of the words in the Old Testament, uh, uh, praise God, for hand is also the word for door. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Look at somebody say, open the door. Open the door. Lift up your hand and open the door for the king of glory to come into your situation. Say, why do you lift your hand? Because I'm opening the door. Be lift up your heads, oh, your gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king glory. Ah. Ja uh, Jacob understood that there was something that happened in Bethel that didn't happen in other places. He understood that this place was a special place. He understood that this was a place, it was a portal of heaven. Mm. Do, you, do you know, praise God, that, 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 that there, there is scriptural foundation for portals? How many remember the story of the man at the pool of Bethesda? And the Bible says, praise God. Now this was interesting because it says that at a certain season, the angel came down and troubled the water. And anybody that stepped in, the first one that stepped in got their healing. Now look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to be first today. You can be second if you want to, but I'm going to be first today. I'm getting in this portal. I'm getting in this place. Hey, shop. They understood that there was a portal at Bethesda. Mm. Mm. There was an entryway of heaven's glory and power into the natural realm. If you really, when you really read the 24th chapter, division of Psalms you actually if you read it from the first verse it's talking about the earth is the Lord's the fullness everything belongs to me but then it says praise God and then it tells you how he gets into his own earth he created it but how does he get into it through everlasting doors oh Lord let me get let me get to what I'm I, I oh thank you Jesus who is this king of glory the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. In other words, praise God. God is ready to fight for you. You need, you need, you need God to release a host on your, on your behalf. Verse 9 says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Mm. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Now, I don't have time to talk about that. The Lord of hosts in the, in the, is the Lord God, Sabor Oath. The Lord of hosts, that, that Lord of hosts is in, in the original is Sabor Oath. It's the Lord of the armies of heaven. <laughs> I don't know about you, but sometimes I need God to, to send an army against the things that's been fighting me, that's been frustrating me that's been coming at me that's been messing with my children that's been messing with my family I need God to send an army I need somebody that can fight thank you Jesus oh Lord let me get the Lord God see so the doors are open now let's go back to Jacob and I want to just because I want to share something with you because this is the Lord uh, gave me this and I didn't even know I was going to even talk about this today but what I want you to see is he may he he realized it was the house of God now you got to understand that 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 you got to take advantage you got to take advantage of situations and open doors when they're open you can't wait until next Sunday when the door is open this Sunday. 
See, the man at the Bethesda, he knew, he said, if I get in there first, even though he never got in there first, he knew if he got in there first, and he, he was going to take his chance. I don't know if he was just going to roll out of his, off of his bed in there, but he was going to get in there some kind of way. Many of us don't understand that many times in a, in, a, in a certain atmosphere, in a certain opening in the spirit, is that you can take advantage of that situation and use it to your advantage. Jacob realized this is the house of God. This is a portal of heaven. There's angels in this place going up and bringing stuff down and taking stuff up. And so what, what he realizes is that, see, I, 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 I want you to understand how to take advantage of portals and, and, and heavenly gateway opportunities. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Don't wait for next week. Do it today. Get it today. So what are you talking about? Look at what David, I mean, excuse me, what, what Jacob did. He poured out the oil. He marked that place. And then what he did is the Bible says in the 20th verse, and Jacob vowed a vow. Now, this is, this, this is something that we, as the new modern millennial uh, generation, and we don't understand about vows. We, we, we don't, in, in a modern day, we don't even understand about vows, God vows. But I want to show you something. He makes a vow saying, if God will be with me, and keep me in this way that I go and give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace then shall the Lord be my God and then he says and this stone house of God which I, which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house and all and of all that thou shall give me I will surely give thee the tenth under thee. Now, he didn't say a tenth. He said the tenth. How did he know? Why did he, why did he say a tenth instead of the tenth? It's because the tenth tells us that he understood that Abraham had given a tenth to Melchizedek and he understood that, 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 that his father Isaac had sold in the land and received a hundredfold and he understood about sowing and giving and he understood the tenth. It's getting quiet in here now because he's oh he might take an offer no I'm not going to take an offer but I'm going to try to get you to understand something God says to, to, to uh, uh, in the 15th verse he says behold I am with thee this is what God is telling Jacob and I will keep thee in all the places where this over there going and will bring thee again unto this land for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to the of. In other words, God is saying, look, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to partner with you. And I'm going to stay with you until it, the job get done. Believe me, saints, God is not going to leave you until the job gets done. Now, the reason you need to know that is because soon, now, see, because we read the whole, we shouting, but you know what? As, as soon as Jacob got through with this great experience with God, he goes down and gets with Laban, the swindler. Isn't it amazing that as soon as God gives you a promise, as soon as God gives you a promise, and praise God, the devil will come, praise God, to make sure that you know, praise God, that I'm never going to allow that promise to come to pass. But, but Jacob took advantage of the fact that he had a portal, he had access to God, he had an audience with God, and now he's saying, look, God, this is what I'm going to do. If you will take care of me, if you'll do what you say, if you'll give me what I need and get me in peace, he said, then I'm going to give you the tenth. Have you ever made a covenant with God? Have you ever said, God, if you do this, I will do that? Hmm. Have you ever had God, have you ever made a partnership agreement with God? I have. 
I remember when the Lord, when I, when I gave my life to the Lord, the Lord said to, the Lord said to me when He spoke to me, I, when He, when I had my encounter with the Lord and I gave my life to the Lord that Friday, February the sixth, nineteen and seventy, when the Lord said to me, He said, "If you will serve me, He said, I will bless you." That's what He was saying, just like He told told uh, Jacob. He said, "Jacob, behold, I'll keep thee." Whether you, wherever you go, wherever you be, it don't make a difference where you at, who's around you, how many swindlers around you, how many cutthroats and backstabbers there are around you, I'll take care of you. And God said, he'll bless me. And God began to, and, and you know, this, case, this really, I, 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 I want to I I share something with you. I want to share a story with you. I was looking, I was, I was, um, I was actually, actually, I, I had, I was looking through and reading out of my news app on my, I was reading about the news, and they, and they had a article on the children of black billionaires, the children of black billionaires. So I just, it was just interesting. So I put it, and I was reading it. it you know, it had different ones in it, and then it had this particular. And I just began to read it. And then as I read it, something on the inside of me would not allow me to sleep. I had to get up and go down to my computer. Sister Hogan, and remember, I got up and went down to my computer. And I began to type in. And, and uh, this is one of the, one of the uh, this is an article. It's actually an article. It's an old article that I found. Because I looked up this particular billionaire. It's a Nigerian woman that's a billionaire and I looked I looked up her her uh, you know her name and her company and then 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 it, it gave me this article and when it gave me this article I read it and I could not sleep is that if the Lord was saying I want to partner with my people if if they will partner with me I will bring to pass every confession they've been making about millionaires if they will just partner with me. So, and this was amazing because I, it, was just, it was just an article talking about several black billionaires. It was talking about their children. It was talking about uh, this particular one and others. They talked about Michael Jordan and then they talked about several others. But most of them were, were Africans. Most of them were Africans. Most of them were, were, uh, uh, were African billionaires from the continent of Africa. And so I read, I read this. Let me, let me read a little bit of this for you. And this just, this, it's an it, it's a old article from CN, CNBC. September 17th, 2016. I can't hardly pronounce this name, so give me grace. Falorunsha Alakija. And it talks about how Africa's second richest woman gained her fortune. It says, in the heart of Logos, Lo 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 Logos is, is the capital of Nigeria, Lagos. The Rose of Sharon Glorious Ministry International is home of an intimate congregation who meets every Tuesday to fellowship for fellowship and prayer. They are dedicated to a common purpose to serve God, a vision which has remained intact since its founder, F Flora L R Ruscio, Elijah, Elijah, is is A L A K I J A. Made a pact with God decades ago, and this is what she says. I don't think this is quote. I don't think I could have gotten this far if I had not entered into a covenant with God. It was 25 years it's, it was 25 years since I gave my life to Christ. I entered into an agreement that if he would bless me, 
I would serve him all the days of my life, says Elikia. <laughs> the ministry the ministry is one of many of Elikia's is keeping one of the ways in which Elikia is keeping her promise to God. Another is through her work with the Rosa Sharon Foundation a not-for-profit providing care, financial support, and scholarship for widows and orphans. In return, God has kept his side of the bargain. Elijah is worth a staggering $1.7 billion, according to Forbes magazine, making her the fourth richest person in Nigeria, the, the second richest person in Nigeria behind Isabel Dos Santos. She is the vice chairman of Nigerian Oil Exploration Company, FAMFA Oil, which, share, which, which shares a joint partnership agreement with international giant Chevron and Petrobras with a 60% stake in a block of, 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 of 120 uh, of oil field, M, M, Agbami Oil, field one of Nigeria's richest deep water discoveries fam for oil produces approximately 250,000 barrels of crude oil a day having just turned Elijah having just turned 65 in July Elijah has a lot to be thankful for she is blessed with a dedicated husband four sons and grandchildren Elijah's feet is firmly on the ground but her journey became one of Forbes two most powerful women in the world and begin with an encounter at 36,000 feet above sea level now this is this, I don't, this might be too long for me to go all the way through. Y'all want me to go all the way through the Finish this article. This is somebody that made a pact with God. I don't know who I'm talking to. But some of, you, some of y'all need to make God the partner in your business. You need to say, God... I want you to bless me with billions and if you will I'll set up a foundation and I'll educate young black men and women in the see we don't do that no more let, let, let me give you her story it's awesome she, she said it started at 36,000 square feet on an airplane she said I met a friend of mine on a flight on my way to England and she asked me if I could help her partners to be able to lift oil from Nigeria so I called around and set up an appointment with the petroleum minister but he discouraged me he said are these folks willing to invest in Nigeria because the government did not want to encourage more foreigners to come and lift its crude I asked my friend who said they didn't want to who said they didn't want to invest in Nigeria and that was the end of that said Elijah with that the new oil opportunity came to an end but her dogged determination transformed this negative conclusion into one of the most renowned success stories to come from Africa this tenacity began at an early age she said I come from a Muslim background and it was a polygamous lifestyle my father had eight wives and 52 children all the wives had to cooperate with each other to them, it was, uh, it, it, to, to, to them, that was life. That's what life was. They cooperated with one another. They quarreled and, made, quarreled, quarreled and made up again. Most of us were living under the one roof in a private bedrooms. I think about four floors of a building in the heart of Lagos Island, said Elijah. Born into a family of traders, Elijah cut her teeth on textile trade while still a child. My siblings and I used to help my mom in the store and that was where I learned about textiles and textures and colors and patterns and merchandising. That was where I learned all the practical steps that, I, that, that later on applied to my fashion business. The fashion business came after her stint in the corporate banking world, after qualifying as a secretary in Britain, a place where she also went to school from the age of 7 to 11. Elijah worked as an executive secretary 
with the Bank of Saje Enterprise in Logos for a year and a half before joining the International Merchant Bank Nigeria. I joined them as a secretary and I was there for about 12 years. I was promoted to other departments of the bank, including heading the corporate affairs department from where I moved into proper banking, working in the treasury department. I loved it because I was trading with the bank's money to make money for the bank. Later on, the bank was expanded and they started putting extra cogs between the wheels in ensuring that people did not get promoted too fast to get to the top positions within the bank. So I asked myself, how long will it take me to get to the treasury office to the general manager said Elijah. She quit her job and decided to study fashion design. She enrolled in the American College of, in London as well as in Central, uh, a Central School of Fashion where she obtained a distinction. Immediately after that Supreme Stitches was born and Elijah began renowned for her halt cultural range which was worn by women around the world. Elijah said divine intervention persuaded her to rename her fashion business. I rebranded re to Rosa Sharon. Now you know we know that, but we know that. The Rosa Sharon and the Lily of the Valley. The Rosa Sharon fashion because God gave me a revelation that I needed to change the name. It was a revelation initially given through a pastor in other words, a prophetic word. But I decided that I was not going to change it until I heard from God myself. I had a dream a year after the prophecy was given. And I saw m the new name of, on the body of my van in the dream. And I changed overnight. I want to tell you something about your prophetic words. You can throw them in the trash if you want to. Hmm. Then came her foray into printing. Elijah established roles of sharing prints and promotions as well as digital reality print. I wanted, I wanted a new challenge. I was getting bored with fashion business. The printing business did well for the first couple of years before I got into trouble, she says. Logos State Government clamped down on the printing business because billboards were clogging up the skyline. Sales for her fledgling business plummeted. Don't ever give up. At some point when I went ab abroad, I saw some printing machines, re realized that those were similar kinds of machines. I had, shown, I, I had been shown in the dream, but those were for offset. I went into the wrong type of printing on, out of disobedience and ignorance. I misunderstood, and I was excited about the large format machine, so I didn't do too much homework into trying to find out more about the pictures that I saw in my dream. So I eventually got into offset printing five years ago, and it's been a success. I started out with 30 people, and now we have a, about 100 employees, said Electrica. There was a smooth transition from the fashion into the mass-produced T-shirts, demand for monograms, and so on. Let me go on down. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to skip a little bit. I'm trying to... Y'all look like y'all attention. I got y'all's attention. When I said 1.7 billion, y'all was all like, boy, boy. you said it's on like a pot of neck bones. <laughs> the company set up departments, including some souvenir departments, where, we, where they imparted souvenirs and gifts, items from China. Even the entrepreneur Alajica was still on the lookout for the next big thing. Alajica encountered encounter with her friend on the flight to England was fortuitous after her friend decided not to invest in Nigerian oil industry Elijah decided to make use of her new contract her, her new contact Mariam Bab Baginda Mariam was the wife of Abram Baginda the former president of Nigeria under military rule as a customer of Supreme Stitches, in other words, she became one of her customers for her, her clothing, Marion was able to secure another appointment for Elijah with the petroleum minister. I went back and told the petroleum minister that I would like to render other services like catering for the oil industry. He said there was already so many caterers on board the various ships on the high sea, and as a result, there was no opportunities available. Although disappointed, Elijah did not give up. Don't give up. 
She decided to do something, some more homework after consultation with a close relative who worked for the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation at NNPC. She was advised to offer transportation services for the petroleum industry. It took a long time to get another meeting with the petroleum minister. I finally got another opportunity and I wrote an official letter saying, I would like to offer transportation services for the oil sector. The minister feedback was he didn't think it was a good idea because the government would, would soon be doing away with the trucks and would be using the transport crude oil uh, and, 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 uh, and replace them with a lot of pipelines instead. So I said, what am I going to do? What am I going to ask for now? And he said, why don't you think of exploration? Now, I, that, I'm going to read this, because I, I kind of understand something about the oil business. Exploration is what they call upstream. That means going against the grain. And that is that you don't just walk in and get exploration. He said the government wants to put the resources of its land in the hands of its nationals because it feels that it's about time for Nigerians to begin to exploit its own resources rather than to let multinationals continue to take away our wealth. I had given up at this point. I thought he was being sarcastic, you know, in other words, expiration. And he didn't want to help, to help, uh, he didn't want to help all along. She said, Elijah cried all night as it felt as if a major door had been closed. After seeking consolation from her husband, Elijah went on a in to, to inform uh, Marion, you know, the, the former president of uh, uh, wife, the outcome of the meeting. I told her that I was that it was bad news that the petroleum minister wants wants to, uh, wants to give me a heart attack. I went back to do a lot more homework and I consulted with a friend of my husband who was already in the oil business. At the end of the research, I decided not to give up and officially apply for an opportunity to get an oil block, said Elijica. Before submitting her letter, Elijica had already found her technical partner and it was now a waiting game. To her surprise, the oil minister was replaced and Elijica had to restart the whole process over again. Haven't you been there? She kept pushing. Everything seemed to be going according to plan when the second oil minister was also replaced. At that stage, I, st it still wasn't ready to, I still wasn't ready to give up. The third minister finally wrote me a letter to tell me my application was receiving attention after two years. I got the letter and I cried my eyes out in frustration again at the snail's pace progress the application was making, said Elijah. Swaying from one military coup to another, the Nigerian political climate was volatile during the 1990s. While on holiday in the Philippines, news broke that yet another change in the Nigerian reg reg regime. Elijah's oil application was being reviewed. I raced back to Nigeria to find that the current administration had already done the oil blocks allocations before they left power and my license was waiting for me. It took three years of not taking no for an answer and going back each time the door was shut in my face, says Elijah. She finally had her oil block, but the battle was far from over. When I was making the application, I listed several blocks. You know, they're different blocks. They're just, they give you allocations, blocks. So they, they, uh, different, different areas that you can, that they're going to give you oil and the allocations in that area. And so she applied for many of them. And then she says, so I applied for several blocks. And the one I was allocated was the one nobody wanted because it was deep offshore. And nobody was exploring deep offshore because it was too expensive to explore and there was no technology around to explore that initial depth of 5,000 feet at that time, said Elijah. At first, it seems Elijah had drawn a, the short straw. She did not have the technology, the expertise, the money to start the process of exploration. Elijah, with support from her husband, had to use their life savings 
to secure the license or face losing it after the government threatened to terminate the agreement if the full payment was not made. It took Elijah an additional three years to find new partners after the initial partners pulled out. Boy, this is, this is something, ain't it? After three years of knocking on countless doors, their persistence paid off. Texaco was already in Nigeria and looking to expand their business. They went to the Department of Petroleum Resources who told them that FAMFA Oil was looking for a technical partner. So they linked us up. The license we had was not worth more than the paper it was written on until they came in, says Elijah. Five years later, Chevron bought Texaco, including the partnership with FAMFA Oil. After receiving a signature bonus out of which Elijah was able to pay the balance of the license to the government, Elijah started working with her new partners. Chevron set up offices four months after signing the partnership contract, and Elijah was holding 60% of the shareholding of the oil block and Chevron taking 40%. Chevron later sold an 8% stake to Pe Petrobus in exchange for their deep offshore technical expertise. You can find oil, but if what you have spent is more than the quantity of oil available within the block to make your money back in multiples, then it was not worth it. In other words, you still don't know whether you're going to make any money. So it's not worth carrying and on that and, and, and you need to cut your losses. You could even have a dry hole after spending millions to explore. So when we found oil commercial, in commercial quantities, they said they had to announce it to their shareholders and, it, and, it, and the battle began. The announcement of a major fine, Elijah's oil block by Chevron, attracted the attention of the Nigerian government, who had initially assumed that the oil block was one of the worst due to its location, and the government snatched 40% back stake in Elijah and gave her 10%. We felt it was like it was unfair. We, we, had, we were we taken the sole risk, invested everything we had in the business. It had become a family business. We spent six years of our family to ensure and work out, and now it, it was bearing fruit, and just they step in and took away everything that we had struggled and worked so extremely hard for. And I said to myself, Elijah does not give up. My husband does not give up. My children do not give up. Most of our advisors believed it would be impossible to win a legal battle against the government which at the time was notorious for corruption. Elijah ignored the advice and took the government to court. For her, the case was simple. The Nigeria has a constitution and nobody, including the government, is above the constitution. After 12 years of intense legal battles, the court returned the 60% sharehold back to the family. It was bittersweet. There were a lot of sleepless nights and battles. Suddenly, we became the plague. Our friends stopped picking us up and calling us. <laughs> In other words, they were saying, why can't you just, couldn't just take the 10%? She goes on to say, she goes on to, to, to say, it's no way that she could have done it without the help of the Lord. 1 point, 1 1.7 billion dollars now that's back in 2000 and, and uh, this article was, was written in 2016. I am sure she is worth much more. Now I want to say this. I, I went through all of that to say this. How many of you have even covenanted with God to pay your tithe? How do you expect God to bless you when you have no confidence in the covenant that he made for the tithe? Hmm. Oh, I can't give that. That's too much. She made a commitment with God. I looked on her, web, her church web, website. They, they, I mean, and the things that they are doing. But she, has a, she is a billionaire. She is a believer. She is a billionaire. She is a pastor. Her and her husband pastor a church in Nigeria. And they are billionaires. 
I don't know about you, but I have made a commitment to God to partner with him. You, 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 can, you can say to God, God, if you will bless me, I will serve you all the days of my life. That's the commitment she made. And God blessed her. You can say, Lord, I'm, 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 I'm going to give you my tithe and I'm going to give you my offerings. And Lord, I'm going to believe you. Lord, if you will, you can hold God to, 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 to manifest and doing what he said he would do. I know this ain't a typical message. But I got a prophecy said I was going to be a billionaire. And I believe it. I know that shocks some people because they say, what do you mean, church, a pastor, a billionaire? I tithe. Me and Sister Hogan tithe. We tithe everything that we get and we give offerings. And I believe that, that, that God honors that. And God told me, he said, if you serve me, I will bless you. And God has blessed us down through the years. Blessed us. I mean, God has, we've been on welfare, but God has blessed us, blessed our socks off. But there is another blessing. There's another level of blessing. We've been prophesying over you. We've been declaring over you, over your offerings, that God is making us millionaires. It's time for millionaires to manifest. It's time. And I believe that God is opening up a portal today. It's like a window that God is opening. And God's saying, if you make a commitment, if you, if you make a commitment, say, God. Because I, I told God this. I said, God, it don't make no sense that, 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 that these folk that ain't that take that ain't doing right with the money these rich folk got money don't do anything to help anybody uh, and here it is praise God here it is we the children of God you mean to tell me that God wants his children to be poor but he wants everybody else to be rich amen Now I'm not telling you. Look, let me. But I'm gonna let me tell you. Let me say this as a disclaimer. Don't make a vow to God you ain't gonna keep. Don't make no vow to God that you're not going to keep. Because 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 God will hold you to the vow you made, accountable to the vow you made. So don't make no vow you don't you can't keep. But but we got We used to have a song we used to sing in the old church. I don't know, some of y'all older people remember. I made a vow to the Lord and I won't take it back. How many, you, you remember that song? I made a vow to the Lord and I won't take it back. We used to sing that song. So we used to sing, Lord, help me to keep my vow. <laughs> and I won't take it back. See, we don't believe in those. We, we, you know, we, we New Testament believe. But... You can, you can say to God, God, if you will bless me, if you will bless my children and my children's children, I will serve you all the days of my life. Sometimes it's just a window. God will just open up. It'll be a time and a season when God will just open up a window. And, and if you take advantage of it, I believe that we're in a season that God is opening up an opportunity for us to access God in a way that we've not accessed him before. I believe God wants to make some millionaires and some billionaires in the house. Oh, praise God. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I want to I want to be able to give every one of our young people pay for their college education. I want to be able to pay for their college education. 
I want to I want to set up a foundation that 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 uh, 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 that that will focus on uh, uh, the the revitalizing and 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 changing uh, uh, the 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 mindsets of our of our young people that are killing one another in our inner cities. Just it, some thing, some things you can't do without money. I was looking at her foundation. She has a foundation. She helps orphans, widows. She helps young people. No wonder God is blessing her. Now, if you want to be blessed just so you can ride in a Cadillac or a Mercedes Benz or a Bentley. But just think if you, said, if, if you were to say, God, if you, if, you, if you bless me to be a billionaire, I, I, I want to make sure, praise God, that, that, that uh, uh, I want to take uh, care of the salaries of all of the pastors in the city of Detroit. So their church no longer has to pay them a salary. And that money can be used for or I, or I, or I want to use I want to put aside millions of dollars just to 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 be able to 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 recondition church buildings and and to help Pat oh, you, you think God ain't gonna bless you stand on your feet I, I, I guess I preached two messages so it's all right don't ever give up Sometimes when God tells you what he's going to do for you, the first thing is you meet your Laban. And he starts stealing from you. And it looked like everything's going the wrong way and God just told you he was going to bless you. But you have to persevere. You can't, when doors close in your face, you can't, you can't turn around and, get, and, 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 and give up. I'm not going to tell you to, I'm not going to lead you in no prayer to commit to God. You take care of that yourself. But some folk just need to commit, Lord, I'm just going to do what's right about my tithe. I'm going to do what's right about my offerings. I ain't been doing right about that, and I'm going to do right about that, Lord, because I, and I'm going to believe you for your blessings that you're going to bless me. God said, Jake, it said, said to Jacob, I ain't going to leave you. I will stay with you until it gets done. And you're going to need him with you because you're going to meet your Laban. He's going to steal from you, take everything from you. He's going to change your wages 15 times and praise God. And then you're going to be talking about this wife and he's going to give you somebody. I mean, it's just going to be a mess. But God will stick with you. I looked at this. I read this story and I couldn't sleep because I said, God, you still in the business of blessing. If we commit to you. She made that covenant with God and all the things that she, and if, I mean, just, can you imagine, you know what a billion dollars is? How, how many know what a billion dollars is? A billion dollars is 1,000 million. Take a million, a thousand times, and that's one billion dollars. A thousand times a million. I don't know about you, but that's, I, I, I think, those, I like those zeros. I believe, I, I believe God wants me to have that. He knows my heart. I don't want it for no Cadillac. I don't want it for a Bentley. I don't want it for a big house. I want it for the kingdom. And Lord, I will bless the kingdom if you'll bless me. How many can say, Lord, I'll bless the kingdom if you bless me? Now the test of that is do you even do you do you pay your tithe now? Because if you don't pay your tithe now, you ain't gonna bless the kingdom. Father, we thank you. You are God that keeps your promises. You are covenant God. Jacob made a covenant with you, Lord, and you blessed him. He said, I'll give you the tenth if you bless me and Lord you blessed him Laban tried to steal from him but Lord you caused Lord God those speckled cows to get speckled 
and caused him to lead with all of the wealth that was in Laban's house. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Lord, it's time for the transfer of the wealth to the kingdom of God, to righteous people that will do what is right. Lord, the, the, the doors are opening. The opportunities are coming. Father, we ask you in Jesus' name, Lord, that you will cause us to have eyes to recognize the open doors that you're opening to us. To understand, praise God, that this is not just a building with people in it, but it is a portal for the blessings of God to come into our lives. It is an opening. It's an it's a, it's a everlasting door. It's a portal. And because you are here, Lord, you said in, first, in the first chapter of St. John, you said that the Son of Man, you shall see the Son of Man. You shall see a ladder upon the Son of Man, and you shall see upon the Son of Man angels descending and ascending. This is your house, God. Lord, open doors for your people. Doors of opportunity. Father, I sense that some need to make a re, uh, need to recommit themselves to you and make a commitment. Because if they commit to you, Lord, you always commit to us. Father, I thank you and I praise you, Lord, what you're doing in this house. Let the millionaires arise. Let the billionaires arise. Somebody was about to give up, Father, but they heard today, don't give up. Doors have been shut in your face, but God says that with every door that shuts in the natural, I open up a door in the spiritual. Every door that shuts in your face, I open up another door. The Lord says that your steps are ordered by me. I will not allow you, your footsteps to fall. I will not allow you to be taken advantage of always. The test, the trial is just a stepping stone. And if you will not give up, I hear the Lord saying that if you'll persevere, if you'll persevere, I'll open that door and I'll give you the key to unlock and have access. I hear the Lord saying that there's some divine connections that are going to be coming. Her connection was 36,000 feet in the, in the air. Your connection may come in different ways. But I hear the Lord saying that I'll connect you with the right people. I'll connect you with the right situation. And with the right circumstance. And I'll open doors for you. This is the season of my release, says the Lord, to those that are willing to. To covenant with me Lord if you bless us we'll bless your house if you bless us we'll bless your people if you bless us we'll help the poor if you bless us Lord we'll help the less fortunate if you bless us oh God we'll help the community if you bless us Lord we'll help the government if you bless us Lord God we'll help the city Jesus Give us the wealth. Give us the wealth of the wicked. And we'll use it for the kingdom of God. We'll use it for evangelism. We'll use it for outreach. We'll build schools and universities that will teach and train and develop in the skills of the kingdom of God. Jesus, we covenant with you. That if you will bless us, if you will bless living bread with multiple millionaires and billions of dollars, that we will leave a mark in the earth that cannot be erased. Your name will be glorified and your kingdom will be exalted. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the honor to serve you. And Lord, we expect great things over these next few months. We expect breakthrough and blessings that we've never seen before. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you in Jesus' name.
Come on, put your hands together and give God the glory. Come on, give him the glory. Come on, give him the glory. Now, I want to I want to I want to just do so. I want to pray for business owners. If you have a business, I want you to come. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for business owners. You got a business. Cuz I believe God wants to partner with some of you. You need some contracts. You need some more contracts. You need some more opportunities.